Our gospel reading from today comes from Mark. Listen for the word of the Lord. He left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother, and James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could, not, he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and to put, not put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake the dust off your sandals and give testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello. Hello. Hi. So lovely to be with you this morning. Thank you so much for having me. I bring greetings from your little sister church, Commonwealth of Oakland, a couple neighborhoods over. Uh, we've actually visited your congregation before when we were studying worship music. We came to your evening today service, and it was lovely. Thank you for your creativity and your hospitality. Uh, I'm used to talking to people, preaching to people who respond a little bit. And I hope that you will humor me with maybe a nod or a smile, just to show you're there. I would appreciate it. You may also, if I preach too long, flap your program a little bit and I'll get the message. So I want to talk to you today about discernment and messengers being in community together. So you may notice that our scripture references are not exactly the lectionary, but close. When I read the Mark text, I felt it was, it fit well for where you're at in the process of calling a pastor. But I tweaked the other passages a bit to where the spirit felt, where I felt the spirit was calling me to speak to you today. May this word be a blessing. I want to speak to you today about the spirit speaking to us through unlikely people. I want to speak to you in a couple parts. I want to speak to those who have been delivering the message, those who might feel called to speak up. I want to speak to those who are receiving this word or those who are doing the listening. And I want to also speak to those who are neither. I want to speak to you about this because it is very likely that you are having conversations of this nature in your congregation right now. It's very likely that some of you are fighting to speak up and some of you are also fighting to listen well and to be receptive. Such is the nature of life in community. But I'll start with a story. When I was in college, I came out as a lesbian not long after I got my very first girlfriend. It was very exciting. There were a lot of gay people in my parents' lives, so coming out to my family wasn't that big of a deal, and I wasn't connected to a church at the time, so for the most part, my coming out experience was pretty positive. Um, as if you're a queer person, you may have experienced that when you came out, sometimes you tell one person and then you get really excited about telling a lot of people and you're kind of like a boulder rolling down a hill. You keep telling more people and telling more people and telling more people because it's so exciting and you finally have this feeling of freedom within you. So I was like this. Uh, but I remember all the people that I came out to during this time. Um, I remember one person in particular that I want to tell you about. 
uh, imagine uh, I was working in a horse farm at the time, so I was mucking out stalls with my coworker. And they were pretty close to my family. Um, they were a close friend of my mother's. And I remember we were discussing my coming out. And I remember they asked me a very specific question that stuck with me. They asked me, why do you need to make such a big deal about it? Now, that wasn't the reaction that I was looking for. Why not make a big deal about it? That person had some of their own baggage to figure out about their sexuality, as you may imagine. And you can also imagine me giving a long-winded, stumbling answer that kind of answered their question. Um, but because I was a very young gay person, I had never been asked to articulate something that was so deep inside me. I can now. I tell you this story not to, um, so you can experience some sort of animosity towards this person in my life, and um, not even really to awaken you to the struggle of coming out, but instead to highlight for you how complex and uncomfortable the unfolding of God's voice can be in your life. If this person hadn't asked me this question, I may never have thought about it. And if I had never thought about it, would I be the same person that I am today? Like I said, I know the answer now. For me, coming out was important because I wanted others to know me as deeply as God knew me. I also came out because my ancestors weren't able to be out. It was in part because of my history as well. So in a way, you can see that though this person asked me a difficult or maybe even ignorant question, I was pushed to be able to develop and articulate a part of my identity that was new. That is not small. It is also not without pain. Though this memory is one that I told you that is kind of hard to retell, I want to talk to you about this as a precious moment of the Spirit speaking through someone in a way that was difficult for me to hear, perhaps difficult or nerve-wracking for them to articulate, um, and may have caused tension for other hearers, such as yourself. First, I want to talk to the people who are the ones doing the speaking up. Is this perhaps you? Do you find yourself to be a bit of an Amos sometimes? Perhaps you are put in the situation a lot where you find that you're the one who has to say the true thing, what you believe to be the true thing. The one who maybe has to say the difficult thing. That's exactly what's happening in this scripture. Um, the folks who are speaking to Amos are kind of fed up with him speaking up over and over and over again. And the chief priest, Amaziah, is not just saying to Amos, you can't prophesy anymore, but saying that Amos actually doesn't have the authority to prophesy to the king and to the high court. He doesn't have the authority to be there. Amos, at least from the way he writes, apparently has never struggled to speak truth to authority. But I know that's not everyone, right? Amos also in this passage um, proudly states his profession, that he's a herdsman and a sycamore tree dresser and not a prophet, or more specifically, not a prophet's son. He didn't belong to a prophet's guild, which was a thing at the time. You were a house of prophets that trained up other young prophets, and that was your job. Amos, apparently, um, doesn't suffer from imposter syndrome either. <laughs> he believed he had everything he needed to speak into this space at this time. I chose Amos for your passage today to address this specific group of people, you who feel that you are often called to speak up, to embolden you. Amos is one of the boldest prophets. To give you the confidence of Amos. Amos is confident in his words and confident in exactly who he is and that he can say them because he is confident in who God is and what God has provided him to say. Friends, if you are the ones who are called to speak up, it's okay if you're not confident in yourselves. Remember Moses. He had a stutter, and he was called to be a public speaker for a good chunk of his life. 
have the confidence in God. Have confidence that God is putting something before you that needs to be said to exactly who needs to hear it. What you have to say might be unpleasant for others to receive, and it might be even be unpleasant for you to say. But without your voice, your questioning, and your witness, it may be harder for others to push themselves to grow. Now for you hearer types, you listening for the word, listening to others, perhaps receiving the Amoses in your congregation. The scripture from Mark came forward loud and clear for me, for you today. And unfortunately, it is a cautionary tale. Much of the story is taken up by uh, the people in Jesus's village reacting to Jesus's words. So much so that we don't actually get to experience what any of Jesus's teachings in the village were. They're lost in the narrative forever. The author of this story is quite taken aback. Most of what the hearers are doing are normalizing something that is actually extraordinary. They cite knowing Jesus from a young age, knowing his family, knowing his lineage. They try to dub down Jesus' words since he's familiar to them. But since when is someone less extraordinary because we know them well? Shouldn't it be quite the opposite? Shouldn't our amazement at someone's abilities and insights only increase with how intricately we know them? Apparently not in this situation. My dear hearers, listener types, please don't miss out on a prophetic word for your life or for the church because you know someone's parents <laughs> or you've known someone since they were in high school. The Spirit shows up however the Spirit wants, whenever the Spirit wants. That's my experience, at least. Amen? As Americans, we're very used to having things exactly the way we want them, exactly when we want them. We exert a great deal of control and choice over our lives. The Spirit doesn't particularly seem to care about that, though. Because the risk you take in deeming someone's words perhaps not good enough or inappropriate or not formal enough, the risk you take is that sometimes Jesus will move on without you, as it says in the scriptures. The spirit will dust off her sandals and keep moving. If we refuse to listen for wisdom in the other, we simply miss out. Now for everybody else. If you've been sitting through this sermon so far thinking, you know, I don't really feel called to say anything prophetic lately, or um, I haven't really experienced someone trying to speak truth into my life as of late, you may have had a couple other reactions. So one, you'd really rather everyone just kind of get along and not say challenging things to each other and just enjoy this beautiful sunshine and put it all to rest and move on. <laughs> you also may have simply been enjoying the sunshine so far and so you are a non-anxious person. God bless you. Both <laughs> reactions are totally valid and fine. Either is acceptable. But it's time to come back now. The Spirit led me to the psalm for you today. Yes, it's true that God knows you inside and out, backwards and forwards. God knows all your tendencies and habits, and God has accounted for all of them in the great story of your life. So God knows if this whole back and forth that I have described has made you anxious. If you read previous to Mark, this Mark passage, though, you would see that this story actually comes in a series of four conflict stories, one right after another. God knows this about you and that this probably would have made you squirm a bit. But God knows you so deeply, that means that God also knows 
your neighbor deeply. Those who are called to speak up, those who are called to listen, God knows those people too. You see, it's all very well in hand, actually. So perhaps everybody else, it might be okay to let this back and forth be a little messy. It might be all right to let the people figure things out in an imperfect and yet quite perfect way. If you are one of my daydreamers out in the sunshine, enjoying this beautiful day, I think it would be helpful for you to remind people to come back to the mess, to come back to the imperfection, to stay present. Pull people nearer, back into the process, and keep your eye trained on what becomes of a little tension. Friends, this is part of being a community of faith. We're doing life with God with each other. Our theology is that we believe in the priesthood of all believers, that anyone can have an intimate relationship with God and that that relationship can bear fruit. So let it bear some fruit. Make room for what God would like to use you for. Make room for God to speak into your life through someone else. Make room for folks in your community or family to have these challenging conversations with each other without adding more tension and without diffusing momentum. Dare to perceive the small miracle, mysterious as it is, of God reaching for us in God's own way through others. In the gracious and ever-loving name of Christ, may it be so. Amen.